Hello, hello, dear viewers. A very warm welcome to our channel. It's very good to have you here. In today's video, we are going to have a look at how to test a capacitor or condenser using multimeters. Here we have two different kinds of multimeters. So we'll have a look at how to use both of them in order to test operation of a capacitor. These are temporarily charged storage. This is actually removed from a distributor, a contact point type distributor. Usually have a capacitor connected in parallel to the contact points so that it can store the charge temporarily when the contact points just open. As the contact points open, there is a spark that is arcing through the contact point that will reduce the lifespan of the contact points and it will also affect the magnetic field collapse in the primary winding of the ignition coil. In order to eliminate that, capacitor is connected in parallel to the contact point. So as just the contact point opens, this one is connected to the contact point and this will be connected to the ground. As the contact point opens, that excessive charge that was supposed to jump, that is caused by the self-inductance of the primary winding, will be stored on the capacitor. And the capacitor will discharge that in reverse direction to the primary winding. Let's have a look at how to test this. There are usually markings of the size of the capacitance on this capacitor. There are three tests that we are going to conduct in this video. The first test is the resistance test, second test is the capacitance test, and third test is the voltage test. Now, when you look at the construction of a capacitor, it is just constructed from two parallel plates that are not touching each other. One is connected to the positive, right here, the positive cable, and the other plate is connected to the negative, which is body ground. Now, when electricity is stored, one becomes positively charged and the other will become negatively charged. For this capacitor, this one is a positive charge, the cable is a positive charge, and this will be negatively charged. Now, let's go ahead and test the capacitance, the resistance, and the voltage of this. Every time before starting any test on a capacitor, make sure that it is fully discharged. Fully discharging the capacitor is very, very essential in order to eliminate electric shock. That can be done by simply shorting out the positive to the ground. By shorting out, make sure that there is no charge. Otherwise, it will shock you if there is charge stored on the capacitor. Let's go ahead and do the resistance test. For example, let's use this multimeter. This is a multimeter with a range selector. For example, when measuring resistance, let's go ahead and put it on the largest resistance value, which is 20 mega ohm. Put it on 20 mega ohm and then connect the positive lead of the multimeter to the positive terminal of the capacitor and then the negative to the negative terminal of the capacitor. And what we expect is, if the capacitor is functioning nicely, the resistance value should increase gradually, and then it should come to infinity. This is infinity for this multimeter. This is the infinity indication. It should increase, increase, and finally, it, sh it should reach infinity. This is basically because when we connect the multimeter props to the capacitor, the multimeter will use its battery to charge the capacitor. And as the charging increases, the resistance between the terminals increase, so the resistance of the capacitor should increase, and finally, it should reach infinity. Let's go ahead and do that test. Let's switch off the multimeter, and then connect the red probe to the positive, in the positive terminal of the multimeter should be connected to capacitor's positive, and then let's go ahead and connect the black probe, the negative probe, to the body ground. Now it is connected. Let's go ahead and turn it to resistance and see what will happen to the value on the screen when I turn it to resistance. See, it is increasing. It has increased from some value. It has increased to infinity. It means this capacitor is receiving charge. Let's go ahead and discharge it and do it again so that you can see it clearly. Let's discharge it. Discharging it is done by simply short-circuiting it. Once I have discharged it, look at the multimeter. Let me discharge it. Discharge it. Then, see what will happen to the reading on the screen when I connect it. See? It has gradually increased from some value to infinity, which indicates that this capacitor is receiving charge. It has passed the resistance chair. The resistance has to be infinity. Capacitor terminals, they should not be touching each other, so it should pass, it should increase to infinity. The, the gradual increase of the resistance value shows that 
this capacitor is being charged by the multimeter battery. So on this type of multimeters, put it on maximum resistance value, which is 20 mega ohm for this particular multimeter. Put it on 20 mega ohm and then go ahead and connect the terminals. It should increase and finally reach to infinity. This is exactly what happened when our test is conducted with this capacitor. Put it like so, put it on positive, and then put the other terminal on the negative. See, it has increased to infinity. So this shows that the resistance of this capacitor is good. Now, the difference with this multimeter, however, is that we have no range selector when it comes to resistance. That is the only difference we have when it comes to this multimeter. As you can see, there is no range selector. Only resistance value is selected here. So the test is similar. The remaining tests are all similar. Let's go ahead and select the ohm value. The ohm is auto adjusting on this type of multimeters. So if it is auto adjusting, simply put it on ohms and connect the multimeter to the capacitor. The resistance value should gradually increase and increase and finally it should reach infinity. Now this is the reading of uh, infinity resistance value on this multimeter. I have connected the positive to the positive terminal of the capacitor. Let's go ahead and put the negative and uh, see the resistance value. Resistance should gradually increase from low value and finally it should come to infinity if the capacitor is working nice. See voltage is increasing and finally it reached infinity. Let's discharge the capacitor and do the test again. Discharging like so. Sometimes discharging it by simply shorting the positive and negative can sometimes overheat the capacitor. If you suspect that overheating is an issue, then you can connect some resistance in order to discharge the in order to discharge the capacitors. Just connect some resistance between the two lines. Let's go ahead and do the test again. Connecting positive is already connected, and let's do ahead. Let's go ahead and uh, connect the negative. See the voltage, the resistance value on the multimeter. It should gradually increase and come to infinity. See, it has come to infinity. So the resistance of the resistance of this capacitor shows it's good. Now let's go ahead and test the capacitance. Capacitance of this multimeter test is by connecting this by putting the selector knob on this. This is where it measures capacitance. It has a 20 microfarad range. Let's put it there. Then go ahead and uh, always make sure it is discharged. Go ahead and connect the positive to the positive, the negative to the negative, and see the value that is going to be registered. It will gradually increase because of the charging. Then it will stabilize. See, now we have read 259 nanofarad. The unit is nanofarad. I don't know if it is visible. The unit right there is nanofarad. 1 nanofarad is equivalent to 0 0.001 microfarad. It means this is 0 0.259 microfarad. So this is the capacitance test. Well, when you look at the rating on this capacitance, on this capacitor, it is rated 0 0.25 microfarad. I don't know if it is visible. It is rated 0 0.25 microfarad. Now we have found that it is 0 0.259 microfarad. So this has good capacitance test. And the final test is the voltage test. The voltage test of the capacitor is done by first putting it on resistance, charging the capacitor, then immediately switch to voltage and see the voltage it holds. And when we connect voltage, it should gradually decrease. Voltage value should gradually decrease to zero. Let's go ahead and do that. Put the positive on positive the negative on negative, charge it by putting it on resistance, charge it. Then once it is charged and it has reached infinity, switch it to DC volt. See, it should gradually decrease and finally come to zero. So this is how you do a voltage test. It should finally discharge what it has stored. It should come to zero. So this is how you do the capacity, I mean the voltage test of a capacitor. Put it on resistance, charge it, 
Then once charging, once the capacitor is charged, select DC volt and connect. The voltage should gradually decline as the capacitor discharges. Let's go ahead and do it again. Putting it on 20 ohm to charge it. Now the multimeter battery has charged the capacitor and then switch it to DC volt. See the voltage, it should gradually decrease. If the, if the capacitor is working nice, it should gradually decrease and finally it should reach zero. This indicates that the capacitor has successfully passed the charging and discharging test. We have charged it and then we have some voltage and now the capacitor has discharged. So these are the three tests that you can check in order you can do in order to check operation of the capacitor. So this is how you can do a capacitance test, resistance test and voltage test for a capacitor of this kind. That is all we have for you in this video. If you like what has been presented, please smash the like button. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications so that you will be the first to get notified whenever we come up with another video. Till then, stay safe.